Good morning, Temple of Deliverance. Stand to your feet, please. We ask you to help us worship as we live in favor. Amen. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my brother. Don't give up. Hold on, my sister. Hold on, my sister. Just look up. There's a master There's plan. There's a master plan in store for you. If you, you just make it through, God's going to really, he's going to make it work for all of the trouble. The blessing is double. Come on, say the best. The best is yet to come. The best. The best. Come on, clap if you believe it. The best is yet. Hold on. Hold on, my brother. Don't give up. Hold on, my sister. There's a master plan, and then it's stored for you. God's gonna really, really blow your mind. For all of the trouble, the blessing is double. Come on, help us say the best. Yet, is yet to come. To come. come on, say the best. The best. The best. The best is yet to come. Oh, come on, say today is. Today is the first day. The of first day. The best days of your life. Come on and help us declare that today. Today is the first day of the best days, best days. of your life. Come on, sing it again. Today, today is the first day of the best days of your life. The best, the best. Woo. Come on, it's yet, it's yet to come. To come. The best, the best. Come on, sing it again. The best, the best. It's yet, it's yet to come. Come on and just clap with Woo. us. Come on if you believe it. Woo. You ain't Woo. seen. Your best days yet. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. All right, right here. Say, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing. Seen nothing. You, you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, say, you. You ain't, you ain't seen nothing. Seen nothing. You, ain't, you ain't seen nothing Oh, yeah. Yet. You.
nothing. nothing. You ain't. You ain't. Now this time, nothing. let me hear you say, you ain't. See nothing. Hey, you ain't. Sing it again. Come on, you ain't. You ain't. Not everybody this time. All right. You ain't. You ain't. See nothing. See nothing. You ain't. Good morning. <laughs> uh, okay. God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us all up this morning. God, I thank you for letting us all be here today. And God, I just ask you, bless the service, God. And God, I ask you, please let the word get to these people, God. And God, I just thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for letting us continue to be okay, God, during the pandemic and through all the storms, God. And God, I just thank you for all the things you have done for us, God. And God, I just ask you, please help the pastor uh, with his word, God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Good morning, saints. I'll be reading Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them, about, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The word of the Lord is blessed. How many know there's no failure in God? God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. God can do.
do it. Only God can do it. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do it. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Put your trust in him. Just put your trust in him. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Only God can do it. 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 Everybody, just clap your hands. Good morning, Saints. I'm Taylor Whitty with your youth announcements live at 11 a.m. Please come out to our fun day at Shelby Farms on Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This event will be filled with fun, laughter, and excitement. We will be practicing being socially distant and wearing our masks. The address for the event is 6903 Great View Drive North, Memphis, Tennessee 38134. Next Sunday is going to be filled with glory and praise as we go into our Put a Praise on a Worship Experience service. We are asking the congregation to wear green in their own way. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord. You do not want to miss what God has in store. If you are not able to attend, please stream us live on our Facebook, YouTube, and our church site, tldkojic.org. Be sure to wear your matching sneakers and your praise shoes. The youth department will be selling annual youth explosion shirts starting today. Shirt sizes are small to large will be $15, extra large 16, 2X 17, 3X 18, and 4X 19. This shirt will be worn on our annual youth explosion day. We also will be selling masks for $7. If you are interested, please see a youth representative or our youth president and co-president for more details. We are asking our members to support our youth department by giving a $25 offering this month and our youth department leaders $50. Please specify on the envelope that your offering is for youth month or annual youth explosion. Youth department prayer will be held Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. with the TLD youth department. Please join us on the prayer line. The queue number is 712-775. 7270. That number is 712-775-7270. And the access code is 788-764. This concludes our announcements for today. Stay tuned for more information regarding Youth Month. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Help me say. This is my season. This is my season. 
for grace, come on, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is, this is my season for grace, for grace, for favor, for favor. Come on and praise God if you planted a seed in the ground. You know it's working for your good. The seed you have planted is the seed of faith, the seed of trust, and the seed of belief. And it's working for your good. Father, we want to thank you for your loving kindness and the multitude of your tender mercies. We want to thank you for your benefits, for you daily loadeth us with benefits. We want to thank you for your truth, Lord, for your truth endureth to all generations. And I speak to our hearts on this morning. Bind the power of Satan. Bind the power of darkness. Bind every wicked thing that may try to hinder the saints from being blessed. Anoint my tongue, thee lips of clay, that we will speak as an oracle of thee. Grant us the tongue of the learned, that we may speak a word in season to them which are weary, and let your word find its target. Save today. Heal today. Deliver today. Set free today, Lord. Destroy every yoke in the name of Jesus. We believe you, Lord. We trust you. We take you at your word, and we know that there is nothing too hard for you. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let your word go forth as a mighty hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces. And all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor is thine and thine alone. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise in this house and then you may be seated in his presence God bless thank you youth praise team for the ministry of music all day today I love that song that they just got finished singing by my friend and brother Bishop William Murphy is working for your good. And I believe that those of us that love God and who know that the scripture is right, I know that that's a true saying and a true song because we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. God never said it had to feel good. But he did say it's working for your good. Shots that we get in the arm by nurses and doctors don't feel good. They sometimes sting. But it's working for your good. And there's a lot of things that we don't understand, a lot of things that we wish we didn't have to go through, but God allows it to happen as a way to kind of keep us not only humble, but to also keep us dependent upon him. Paul, the apostle, was so great a man. Remember, Paul was not 
a spirit. Paul was not an angel. Paul was a human being. He was a man. And he was so great a man that God had to afflict him and said that God sent the messenger of Satan. The messenger of Satan was sent for me that I might not get too high. <laughs> that I might not get lifted up that I might not feel that I'm all that and a bag of chips. So God allowed the messenger of Satan to afflict him. And sometimes God allows affliction to come our way. But I read somewhere that out of them all, he delivered us. Thank you, Anaya, for the opening prayer and Caleb for that scripture. And we thank God for all of our young people serving today. Open your Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and verse number 2. And I don't like to do a whole lot of promises because I know sometimes things come up and you have to change your mind, but I promise to get you out of here before three. And, and to the visitors that are visiting, visiting today, just having a little fun. They probably say, I'm ready to leave now. <laughs> Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God bless you, ushers. These are the words that were written by the prophet Isaiah, but they are not the words of Isaiah. They are the words written by Isaiah, but not the words of Isaiah. They're the words written by Isaiah that God spoke to Isaiah. For God wanted his church, his people to know, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. Not Isaiah, but I, your Lord, I, your God, will be with you. And when my people passes through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When my people walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Because he goes back in the beginning, because I will be with thee. I want to use a subject this morning that I believe that the Lord placed into my heart that he would say, if he was standing before you today, that you are not alone. You are not alone. Will you look at a neighbor that shows friendly eyes above their masks? If their eyes are not friendly, turn real quick. Don't, don't say nothing to them. They're already in a mood. Don't get them worse. But if their eyes look like they are receptive and friendly, tell them you are not alone. 
you are not alone. I feel that that is a statement that needs repeating over and over again so that the saints, although we already know it, sometimes we just need to hear good stuff again. Because what the enemy has done and what the enemy is doing, he is messing with people's mind during COVID. He's disturbing the mind during COVID. He has some people feeling lonely. He has some people feeling disconnected. He has some people feeling out of the loop. And he has some people feeling as though they cannot make it. And I've often said that, that, that the enemy specializes in playing with your mind. And you've got to be so cautious to allow things and people to play with your mind. Your mind, somebody said, is a terrible thing to waste. And the saints said, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Bishop Mason said, cast the devil out of the mind. Because those old saints, those old pioneers knew that problems and troubles and difficulties can affect the mind. That song, that was birthed out of slavery. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Was birthed during the times of slavery from the African American viewpoint because they were so troubled being bound, held back, humiliated. They came up with the song that nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It was getting in their mind. When Egypt conquered, or actually when Israel was in Egypt, as prisoners, as slaves, for 430 years, it got in their mind when they were in the wilderness going around in circles, it got in their mind. And you have to be very careful that with all of this negative news, with everything that we see going on in the world, and I know your heart is heavy like mine is for those 700 people that they've already found dead in Haiti. And the count continues because of the earthquake. And our hearts are heavy at what we see. The Taliban has already invaded city after city and now they're going after the capital. One, dot, thank you. My brother said one after another. One after another. And if we're not strong-minded people, if we don't have our minds on Jesus, we will allow this stuff to trouble our minds. which means that the devil has taken occupancy of your mind. And
And that is his M.O. He comes to disrupt. He comes to destroy. And even kill your dependency and relationship with God. And relationships are vital. It's vital that we keep a good relationship with God. You don't ever want to get out of communion with God. Because the relationship that you establish with God will help you now and tomorrow. Someone said that the prophet Isaiah stood head and shoulders above the, all the other prophets. One of the scholars said that Isaiah's head was in the clouds while his feet was on the ground, meaning that he heard from God and then disseminated that information to man. As a prophet of the highest order, God sent him to remind and warn Israel of their slack. And you may not want to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But every one of us gets slack from time to time. You slack up on your praise. You slack up on your church attendance. You slack up on your giving. You slack up on your checking on one another. You slack up on loving one another. You slack up on forgiving your neighbor. Every one of us gets slack from time to time. That's why they have gas stations, because they know after a while, if you keep moving, you're going to run out of gas. <laughs> and God knows that if you keep playing and hanging with the wrong crowd and listening to the wrong stuff, that you too are going to run out of spiritual gas. And so God has to send a prophet every now and then to remind his people to get right church so we can go home. He sends this eagle-eye prophet, this seer. And since he is a seer, he sees Israel's problems. He sees Israel's fall. He sees Israel's calamities. He sees Israel's lack of sincerity. They are there in body, but not in spirit. They're watching the preacher preach, but hard to say amen. They wish the prophet, the preacher, would move on to a subject that's a little sweeter. But Isaiah says, I have to say what he said. I know you don't necessarily want to hear it. But if you take your medicine, it'll do you good. I lived in the days when castor oil sawed everything. Two medications we had in our house, castor oil and Father John's. Ooh, 
I can see my mom and my grandmama now. Boy, open your mouth. I got my lips go, open your mouth. I open, and they just check it out. Like, oh. But I had to admit, in a few days, I start feeling better. That's a life lesson that God is telling us to stop some stuff. We don't want to hear it, but if we stop, we'll feel better. Isaiah, as a prophet of the highest order, speaks to the people of God. He knows them. And God always sends somebody that knows you. <laughs> oh, God, help me here. He sends somebody who is familiar with you, that is just like you, a human being. Somebody subject to like passions. Somebody themselves that have to depend on God. He sends that kind of messenger to you to let you know that God is watching you. And when you have shifted in the wrong direction, God is just sending the prophet of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, to get you to shift back. See, those that we don't drive them as much now, most of us have automatic cars, but I remember in my earlier sporty days that I had a stick shift. I love driving my stick shift. But if you didn't know how to drive a stick shift, you tear up the gears. Because you got to keep taking it out of one gear into the next gear, all while you're driving. And, and, and the Lord is saying, if, if you don't learn these life lessons, you're going to strip what I gave you. <laughs> I, I took you up to a higher gear. But you didn't learn how to drive properly, and now you're stripping what I gave you. <laughs> and God wants his people to go higher. This yellow that we got on, yellow represents sunshine. Uh, oh, the, the yellow represents brightness. It's cheery. When we look at all this yellow, it's a cheeriness in here. You ought to be smiling under your mask. Yellow brightens up the room, makes me feel better. I feel good when I look outside and the sun is shining. It kind of lifts my spirit and lifts my character. It makes me feel good when I can see that yellow. God says it makes me feel good when I see the light shining in your life. It makes me feel good when uh, I know that you are not just speaking words but you mean it in your heart. I don't ever want my people to be like the Pharisees that praise me with their lips, but their heart was far from me. I don't ever want my people to give me lip service if they don't mean it. But I do want my people to build their lives brick by brick, moment by moment, knowing that your God has looked beyond your faults. 
and sees your need. Isaiah came to Israel that had put God down. Now, how do you put someone down that have always lifted you up? How do you ignore somebody that is always doing good things for you? How do you forget to say thank you to somebody that's always giving you blessings? How can you carry on your day Lord, I feel something. How can you carry on your day but can't carry on with me? How can you believe in others but won't believe in me? How can you spend countless time on the internet, on social media. How can you text and email and correspond all day long, but I barely hear from you? I want to know what's wrong. I want to know what have I done. God is saying, I want to know, have you really looked at this thing out of clear eyeglasses? Do you realize what you are doing? And when Isaiah spoke to Israel, he had to let them know you are the apple of God's eye, but right now the apple is rotten. Right now, when I cut the apple open, I see some brown spots. Which means that the apple is turning. I want my people to have everything they need. But to receive you got to give. If you want, you got to do something. If you will go back to looking to the hills from which cometh your help. If you will turn back Turn back the clock for a minute and remember how you were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I? You will remember that without me, you can do nothing. God is saying, all I'm trying to get you to see is when you turn, I'll turn. The only reason the Assyrian army has devastated, has plummeted, has captured Israel is because I saw Israel not doing what they should do. But as soon as I see you back on the train, the train of thanksgiving, the train of worship, the train of appreciation, 
As soon as I see you back on the train, then the same God that sent the Assyrians are going to send them a message to get away. And I'm just fool enough to believe that if I continue to praise God like he wants me to, that God will restore me, that God will revive me, and that God will move on my situation. You see, some of us have some small children that happen to be in school now. The schools have mandated for this semester that they will not have virtual learning and that they have to come in person to the classroom. And you just have to let them go. But while they are there, you ought to be confident that you have a relationship with God. And they are not there by themselves. They are not there in the classroom wondering, is anything going to get on me? But something is on them. It's the prayers of the righteous and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When I send my children to school, I've already anointed them. I've already prayed for them. And when they get on the grounds of the school, when they walk into the doors of the school, when they walk down the hallways of the school, when they sit in the chair in the school, they are not there by themselves. God has assigned an angel all around my son and all around my daughter. And I just believe it like it is. That's why when I go to bed at night, I'm not staying up all night. Every time I hear noise, I'm not staying up all night losing sleep because I'm scared of every little noise I hear. I got an angel surrounding my house. And every now and then, I know God is not absent-minded. I know God does not have Alzheimer's. I know God does not suffer with dementia. But every now and then, I tell him, I remind him that, Lord, I'm your servant, and you just need to check out the front door. You need to check out the back door. And when you check it out, you'll see the blood over the doorpost of my house that lets you know I'm a child of God. And I just believe that every child of God, you got a blessing coming. And when Isaiah told them, he said, you've got to come on up. Initially, Isaiah talked about doom and gloom. Initially, he talked about judgment. Initially, he talked about prophecy, that this is what's going to happen if you don't get right and get yourself together. And then some of them caught on. Some of them said, God is not playing with us. God means business. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to go back to praising God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go back to giving God the glory. I don't know about you, but I'm going to lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. And I believe, I believe, I believe that that's what we ought to do when we come to church. I believe that when we get in our seat, when the ushers usher us to our row, if you're sitting on a row that's in the dead zone, nobody on the row is giving God glory. 
I believe that it ought to start with you. You ought to change your atmosphere. You ought to change your role and say this role is dedicated unto the Lord. This role is dedicated to clapping their hands. This role is dedicated to leaping for joy. And on this road, there shall be peace. On this road, there shall be deliverance. On this road, there shall be joy, unspeakable joy, and that full of glory. Because I just can't sit. I know everybody's different, and everybody's not emotional. And everybody don't move, and that's all right if that's the way you feel. But when I look back over my shoulder and see what God brought me through and how God brought me out, I can't hold my peace because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything that is done for me, I got to say something. I got to scream. I got to holler. I got to leap. I got to run. I got to make some noise, a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Enter his gates, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I bless him because he's been good. I bless him because he made a way. I bless him because I found out can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. I found out he'll be a doctor in the sick room. I found out He'll be a bridge over troubled water. I found out that when thou passest through the waters, God said, I'll be with you. Look at somebody and say, you're not alone. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And when you go through the river, I'll be with you. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, you are not alone. When you walk through the fire, I'll walk with you. You are not alone. Neither will the flame kindle upon thee. I got your back. I got your back. I'm your real war. I'm the joy of your life. I'm the strength of your life and the joy of your salvation. I just need you to go back to the basics. Don't try to be cute. Don't try to be dignified. Just thank God for where you are. Look where he brought me from. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's why you are a royal people. That's why you are a chosen generation. That's why you are a peculiar people. That's why God told you to praise him that brought you out into his marvelous light as much as I can. I got to praise him as much as I can. I got to give him glory as much as I can. I got to lift my hands as much as I can. I got to tell him thank you when I look at my clothes. Thank you when I open up my car. Thank you when I get in my house. Thank you when I look at the meal I eat. Thank you when I look at my family. Thank you when I drive down the street. Thank you when I go to and fro. Thank you. Look where he brought me from. I got to thank him because he's been good. I got to thank him because he made a way. I got to thank him because I found out he's a mind regulator. 
He's a devil driver. He's a joy supplier. He's the strength of my life. Yeah! King! I got the clothes, but is there anybody here that know he's all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he heal your body? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he put running in your feet? Won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he can. How do you know that he'll do it? The reason I know that God will do it is because he did it before. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. Come on, give God glory. If you sit next to a neighbor that lives in your house and you came with them, why don't you give them an elbow and say he'll make it all right? And those of you that's like me, you don't have nobody to elbow. Well, just give it an air elbow and say, I know he'll make it all right. Elder Carter, if anybody asks me what's wrong with me, just tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running, oh, running, I'm running. For my life, say yeah, say yeah. Ah. Woo. Come on, give God glory. Anybody feel Jesus in this room? Every now and then, y'all to feel something going on. Look down your road. And make sure that your neighbors are still breathing. Make sure your neighbors are still breathing. Because the Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. If they're not moving, they must not be breathing.
I'm gonna give you another 60 seconds. You got 60 seconds to let go and let God get your praise on for another 60 seconds. So we got to move on. You better get it, get it, get it, get it. You got another 50 seconds. You better get it.
somebody ought to feel that burden being lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to feel God unlocking that shackle. Somebody ought to feel God replenishing your joy. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Woo. Anybody here remember the old Monopoly games? God just gave somebody a get out of jail card. God just broke you out your prison, your prison of, your prison of heaviness, your prison of sickness, your prison of disease, your prison of unbelief. God just broke you out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing of God. Woo. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Lord, touch 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 everywhere. In this room. Those watching online, touch. Those of you watching online, look at me right now. God is touching you right now. God is speaking to your situation, to your mountain, and God is disconnecting you Woo. from that burden. Ha! Ah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel his glory. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, somebody's leaving this service today delivered. Somebody's leaving today delivered. You ought to lift your hands and say, Lord, let it be me. Lord, let it be me. Lord, let it be me. When I leave this place today, I leave with victory. I leave with healing. I leave with forgiveness. I leave with new strength. There could be somebody in this building, somebody watching online that's not saved and the Lord Jesus loves you. The Bible said, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance. The Bible says, asking it shall be given, seeking ye shall find not, and the door shall be opened. God has enough scripture to let you know if you want him, he wants you. If you're in this building today and you're not saved or you're in a backslidden condition, get my attention like this by waving at me. Keep your hands like you're waving at me trying to get my attention. I see one up in the risers. I see another down here on the floor. That's it. Thank you. Somebody else, you got my attention. There's another one. Three. There's another four. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody give God praise for these souls. 
There's another one. Five. There's another one. I can't see you online. You could be waving at me at home. I can't see that, but God sees. And we're going to pray and believe God. All you have to do is acknowledge that you are living in sin, acknowledge that you are a backslider, believe that Jesus is God's son that died on the cross, that he raised from the dead. And if you can believe that, my brother, my sister, that waved your hands at me, if you can believe that, if you can believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Lord will save you. The Lord will save you. And right where you are, right where you are seated in this place, God will save you. I'm going to pray with you, and I want you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these hands that have been raised, admitting that they are not saved, but want to be saved. And your word tells me that whosoever come to you, you will in no wise cast out. So God, these hands of these men and women that have raised their hands in this visible sanctuary as well as the invisible sanctuary online, I ask that you forgive them now. I ask, God, that you save them now. As they say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge you as the Son of God. I acknowledge that you died for me and God raised you from the dead. I accept your salvation. And I thank you for loving me, and I thank you for forgiving me and welcoming me into the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer with me in sincerity. You are saved right now. I'm going to ask our workers, those of you that raised your hand, if you'd like to be a member of the church, just wave your hand again, and then our workers, our attendants will come over to you so that you can fill out some paperwork to become a member of this church. Those of you online, info at todkojic.org, send us an email that you'd like to be an online member. We'll gladly have you. I see some hands in the risers that's waving their hands that want to be members. What about here on the floor? Anybody that waved their hand at me? earlier that said I wanted to be saved. Here's one. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. God bless you, my brother. I see you. God bless you. Somebody ought to be happy in that God is saving such as the church needs. Don't tell me God can't save in a pandemic. <laughs> we, 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 we just have to shift and make an adjustment and do it a little differently. We can't have everybody standing, you know, around the, around the altar and I'm shaking everybody's hand. We just can't do that now. But you can still be saved. And the day is going to come that we'll be able to embrace one another again, hug and high-five and dance, not only on the, on the, in the aisles, on the altar. The day's coming. But until, praise him where you at. <laughs> Amen. All right, we're going to worship the Lord in the ministry of giving. And we thank God for our online viewers as well as those here in the sanctuary. 
I know that the youth ushers are working very hard and that they have given envelopes to those that walked in, but if you misplaced yours or you need another envelope, please elevate your hand high that the ushers can serve you as we worship the Lord in tithe and offering. Our giving methods are on the screens for you online as well as you here in the sanctuary. Those online, you may give by uh, giving through the PayPal system that's on the website, todkojic.org. All you have to do is click the Give Online, and you may, it'll take you right into the PayPal system. You may also give through the Givelify app. I've been saying the last few weeks that there are more than one Temple of Deliverance. So make sure that when you give, uh, do Temple of Deliverance, Givelify 369 G.E. Patterson Avenue. No other address, 369. G.E. Patterson Avenue, and you'll see a picture of this church, and you'll see my smiling face. That lets you know that it is the right church to give. You may also text to give, and you may use the number that you see on the screen for debit and credit card donations. We thank God for those who are yet at home worshiping for some reason, you don't feel um, that it's time for you to come out. And so you're still worshiping at home, and that's fine. We thank God that you are still worshiping with us, and we thank you for sending in your offerings. Some send it in through the mail, some drop it off. But we appreciate your consistency in giving and supporting this ministry. Our young people are asking for a $25 offering for Youth Day, they're asking for $25, and that is a way that we show them that we are encouraging them, both with our attendance, with our complying with uh, what they're asking us to dress each Sunday, as well as financially by giving. We're giving to let the young people know that we believe in them and that we support them. And I'm proud of our young people. What about you? Amen. I'm proud of our young people. We've got some great singers in this praise team. Great young people serving as greeters and hospitality and ushers. And many of them that's been doing the opening prayer in scripture, uh, they're doing a dual role. They're doing that and ushering at the same time. So they're working, learning how to serve in the Lord's church. And this will help them greatly down the road. Amen. We're praying for all of our members who have had sickness in their families and death. Some have COVID-19 and we're praying for them. We ask that when our young people give you directions versus seating, that you would comply with them as well as uh, when they give you directions to leave your section, that you would comply with our young people. Don't discourage them. Don't discourage them. Yeah. you still an adult if you do what a child tells you to do. <laughs> that doesn't do anything to your adulthood. All right, I'm going to pray. Uh, young people will be back in prayer tomorrow morning. They are praying Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.30. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the youth schedule for this month. And then Tuesday night, 7.30, we'll be back on for the last night, the third night of this three-week series, Strongholds and Oppressions. Look forward to your attendance. Now, God, again, we thank you, and you can lift those offerings up unto the Lord, whether they be in the envelope or by your phone. Father, we thank you 
that you have blessed us to give. We thank you that you've given us the opportunity to give our tithe and our offering. We have because we give, and we give because we have. We are yours. You, you, we belong to you, and you belong to us. You promised that you would supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so now, God, I ask that you would bless these givers, multiply our gifts, let them be used for the good of the ministry, that we may continue to do those things which are pleasing in your sight. Return back to the giver, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Now make your face shine upon us. Be gracious unto us. Lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. And the people said, Amen. All right, I'm going to ask everyone on the floor, if you please remain in your seats, and then ushers, those in the risers, if you would dismiss the risers from the first row. And we'll clear the risers first. And we got people in the risers all over today. So we'll dismiss the risers first, and then we'll hit these corners.